Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk really loud. Gonna get <laughs> yeah. Can we come to order, please? Thank you. Now, I will say before we begin, I do understand that there is chairs. All right, I'll put it right up. Thank you. Um, I understand that there are chairs and video and everything downstairs as well. So I'm just feeling badly for those of you that are on your feet. Um, at some point, if you decide to go there, you'll still be able to, uh, to hear all of and see all of the proceedings downstairs as well. So, 7 o'clock, and as promised, I think we'll call the meeting to order. I'm Kim Wingrove. I'm the CAO for the County of Grey. And on behalf of uh, the staff and the council, I'd like to welcome you all here and to say thank you to you for taking the time to be here and to take part in a very important discussion about the future of long-term care and senior services in Southern Grey County. I see several faces here tonight that were also here last night, so I know a special recognition to you. I'd also like to thank, before we get going, Russell and his team from CPRE that have done the audio, visual, and the sound for us the last two nights. I, I don't know where we would have been without them, and I, I do want to say thanks so much for all of their help. So we're here tonight to talk about long-term care and senior services, as I said. And this has been a kind of a, rec a recurring conversation at, at, at County Council over many years. Most recently, back in 2015, uh, Great County was advised that the province was going to enhance its long-term care renewal strategy. They let us know that there was additional uh, funding available to support the upgrading of facilities, that facilities that were upgraded would have their license to operate extended for 30 years, and that our Rockwood Terrace facility was eligible to participate in that program. So then throughout 2016, the Social Services Committee at the county and county council looked at a number of aspects of long-term care service delivery and talked to uh, uh, different people who have a part to play in that. And then finally, two weeks ago, staff brought forward the summary report that I think brings us here all together this evening called Long-Term Care Services Review. Since the report's release, I've heard questions and concerns about what the recommendations might mean for people, citizens of Gray County, residents of our facilities, and, um, and people in their community, and the communities themselves. And I want to be clear that the purpose of tonight's gathering is for you to hear firsthand what the report's recommendations are, and to hear about the analysis that underpins those recommendations. Lynn Johnson is here. Lynn is the Director of Long-Term Care for the County. And Lynn and I want to answer your questions to the best of our ability, but mostly we want to listen. We want to hear what you have to say. The reason for the recording of the meetings is that all of this information is being collected and transcribed and there will be a further meeting of County Council on May the 11th, and at that meeting, all of this information will be brought back so that Council has the benefit of, of all of the um, pieces of information and questions and concerns that were raised at these meetings. Looking around the room tonight, there are a number of elected officials, including several Gray County Councillors, and I'm glad they're here, and they're here to listen to you as well. I would remind everyone, though, that if you could please save questions that you have for counselors directly, um, things that you want them to respond to for either a county council meeting or for your local council table. Tonight is about giving you the opportunity to learn more and to ask questions about the plan. I've already introduced Lynn. Also with us tonight are Rob Hatton. He's the manager of communications for Great County, and he'll be helping with the mics in the Q&A session. 
and Sharon Vokes is the county clerk and she'll be taking some more of the notes for tonight so that we have a good record of everything that has happened. At this time, I'd like to turn the mic over to our moderator for this evening, Pat Morden. Uh, Pat's a very f experienced facilitator and someone who we're fortunate to have as she has some significant experience in long-term care administration as well. And we appreciate Pat helping us out last night and again tonight. So without further ado, we'll move forward. Thank you. And here you are. Thanks, Lynn. Are we working here? No? So my name is Pat Morden, and I was chosen to come tonight because I live in Glen Elg, and I ha I'm right dab in the middle between Markdale and Durham. I have a Markdale address, and I have a Durham phone number. And whether I look east or west in my fields, I have lovely rocks, and they're just as pretty to the east as they are to the west. And so my goal here tonight is to help us all have a voice in this important question, and to listen to the voices of others. And so before be, before we start the question and answer, I'm going to review how we're going to do that. The first thing we're going to do is hear from Lynn Johnson the recommendations from staff that they've worked all this time since 2015 to prepare for council. So you hear right from Lynn the report. There will be no questions during the report. You have co hard copies of the report. You can see it on your, um, on, online, and you'll be able to see it up front. So I ask that you give Lynn time to talk, and when she's finished, then I'll come back and we'll talk about how you get to have a raise your questions and your concerns about this report, about the recommendations in the report. All right, so I'll turn it over to Lynn. Good evening, can everyone hear me? No, okay, let's do it again. Good evening, is that better? <laughs> I'm only going through this once, so I wanna make sure you can hear me. <laughs> is that better? That's a challenge when you're a left-handed person and everything's on my left always. I don't do well with my right hand at all, so you'll have to bear with me a little bit. And if you can't hear me at any point, please raise your hands and I will speak louder, okay? Okay. So we're here tonight to talk about what was in the report for the long-term care review. And people really need to have a clear understanding of what is proposed and have an opportunity to provide feedback. Okay, so there's a lot of false rumors out there, assumptions, concerns, and fears, and tonight's an opportunity to share the accurate information on what we're looking at. So we have a duty to provide the best quality of care we have the, for the most people we can, and this is a future-looking plan. We need to be able to meet provincial standards, redevelop beds, plan for the future requirements, and we need to have continued access to high-quality long-term care beds. We need to respond to increasing care needs for our residents, address staffing shortages that we're experiencing now and we anticipate we'll only experience more in the future, and we are looking for an opportunity or at an opportunity to provide access to a mid-level of care for seniors that currently is not available in this community. And it's important that whatever the plan turns out to be, that we ensure a smooth access and transition for the residents who live in the homes. Like other organizations in healthcare across Ontario, we're all experiencing staff shortages and challenges with staffing. And this is only predicted to become more challenging as the years move ahead. We have four, 465 employees, and we have 69 full-time and 13 part-time staff who will be eligible to retire in the next six years. The recruitment of RNs and PSWs, cooks, is all very challenging. And we are currently using agency staff to fill vacant shifts. 
Gray County has three long-term care homes that serve 316 residents. The long-term care budget that we work with is $31.2 million. Long-term care has a very complicated and complex funding system. We receive 54% of our operating budget from the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. And it's a funding envelope system. Nursing and personal care, program and support services, raw food, other accommodations. And it's very specific what can be spent out of each aspect of that budget. The resident portion, $1,794 to $2,563 is what residents pay a month. The resident portion is determined by the government and the same rate applies to all long-term care homes that are licensed and are working within the province of Ontario. Private, municipal, charitable, they all pay the same in those homes. Some residents qualify for a rate reduction and that is also set and managed by the government. The province additionally sets a standard that 40% of the rooms must be at a basic accommodation level. Our homes are built that way and we currently have no problem filling beds in all accommodations. The county supports additionally the long-term care homes and that's $6.2 million for 2017. The ministry requires all homes to meet the new design standards, and that is by 2025. Ontario-wide, there's 30,000, well, more than 30,000 beds in more than 300 homes that need to be developed within this same time frame. A renewal strategy was announced in 2015, and homes that are a B or C class are eligible for a funding subsidy of $16.65 per resident day that will be paid over 25 years. The need to redevelop Rockwood Terrace is based on structural classification from the ministry and there is a financial plan for redeveloping these beds and that's a presentation on its own and it's separate from what we're looking at today. High level, there is government money to help support the redevelopment and the county has been saving money into reserves to support the redevelopment. An important aspect of this review was understanding the current and future population of Gray County and the needs of the population as they continue to age. It's a provincial priority, aging at home, we hear that. We see it occurring more and more often. There's a changing trend for long-term care residents. When they enter long-term care, they're at a later stage in their disease process, more complex health conditions, and residents with higher needs require more specialized care and long-term care is only one part of the whole continuum of care for seniors. This slide shows the radius where the residents come from, from the three homes that are in Gray County, the three Gray County homes specifically. And the majority of the residents that live in our Gray County homes are from Gray County. When reviewing background information, we see some residents moving into the area to be closer to family and friends, and we're also seeing a bit of a trend for seniors moving out of the area to be closer to family and friends. So it's kind of that even move. Larger homes serve residents from a larger geographical area, and sometimes residents are in a home that might be their second or third choice of a home. When the time comes that a bed is available in their first choice, they some move and others decide to stay because they've settled in to where they're living. And it's really difficult to look at a wait list and establish that there's a stronger need in one area than another. And you might wonder why that is, but residents can apply for up to five homes for admission. The same resident can apply for a basic, semi-private, and a private accommodation. And when you look at wait lists, that's the raw number of applications in a lot of cases. There, you have to look a little deeper to try and find the actual number of individuals. So wait lists are not a good measure, or they're not an easy measure to identify. So homes are operated by a variety of providers, private, not-for-profit, charitable, charitable homes fit in that category, and municipalities and all operators follow the same legislation, serve the same clientele, and maintain the same prescribed services and care that's in legislation. Provincially, 21% of the long-term care beds are maintained by municipalities. In Gray County, 40% of the beds 
in the county are maintained by the municipality. This means that the Grey County taxpayer is supporting a higher percentage of long-term care beds than what is found in many other areas of the province. In other words, Grey County is doing more than others in offering long-term care. And on this slide, you'll see on the left-hand side, it shows 21%, and that's the municipality portion provincially, versus the Grey County portion is 40%, the private portion 60% within Grey County. The Ministry of Health determines the number of beds in a geographical area. That's not, we can't do it as citizens, and we can't do it, or the politicians can't do it, it's done by the Ministry. They also determine provincially what that balance is between private and municipal. Private and nonprofit homes have licensed beds and they can sell their beds and transfer their beds between similar type operators, but municipal beds cannot be sold or transferred. If Gray County decided to give up long-term care beds, they would be returned to the ministry and it would be up to the ministry to decide where those beds would go in the province. So if you hear that we're recommending privatization of long-term care beds, it's false. We cannot privatize them, and that is not the intention. So you read lots about seniors being the fastest age group in the country, and this trend is going to continue. The growing number of seniors means that there's an increased demand for services and an increased demand on health care dollars. Organizations all need to consider how to meet the growing needs the acuity changes, and the requirement for these specialized services. And long-term care is only one small part of the continuum of care, and the broader population also has needs that need to be met. So developing forecasts is very complex. It involves key assumptions, migration, national and provincial demographic trends, and we know that some people are moving to our communities for retirement, and we also see some people that have retired here, but as they age, they're moving back to wherever th their family is to retire um, when they need more care and service. The growth rate in Gray County is considered moderate. When looking at a specific age range, it is reasonable to acknowledge that one community may experience sli slightly faster growth or a decrease in the number of people in a certain age bracket. So this slide shows the age bracket of people 75 years of age and older. Some communities will experience a faster growth in this age category. Others have a slower growth. What um, you often see is if you're slower in this age bracket, you're going to be faster in another age bracket. So what the table shows, looking out 2021, 31, and 41, the Georgian Bluffs will experience a steady, faster rate of growth of people in this age bracket than many other areas. West Gray has the third largest population of people 75 years of age and older, and will have the second largest, along with Meaford, within, well, by 2021. So that's where there is going to be a real spurt in the growth. I really like this quote from the Conference Board of Canada. Baby boomers are likely to exhibit stronger preferences for independent living arrangements, greater autonomy, and choice for services than previous generations. It is estimated that 10% of seniors 75 years of age and older will require long-term care. And aging, er, aging at home strategies are helping people to stay at home longer. There are many resources and services that support seniors to maintain their independence, and I've listed a number of them up there on the screen. Adult day programs, Alzheimer's Society, Meals on Wheels, there's exercise programs run by various groups to try and keep seniors happy, healthy, longer in their homes. In looking to the future, Gray County and member municipalities are developing working on and supporting other projects, including transportation enhancements, age-friendly communities, and healthy community initiatives. A goal of the research was to identify how Gray County can efficiently and effectively meet the future demand and continue to provide the best quality of care for the most people with the resources we have. We had a consultant report completed last spring 
and the Siena Senior, Senior Living and Amico consultation report was inward looking and it focused on keeping the existing number of beds and the financial impact of a few different scenarios. Our review used that information and looked out at it further 10 to 20 years to see what changes are going to be from a demographic situation, what the community needs are, and what our ability is to meet those changing needs. We heard from the Southwest Lynn that three quarters of the beds in Gray County need to be redeveloped. And we also heard from the Lynn that there will be some movement of beds among, with the private operators. We also met with the private operators that are in our area to try and establish and identify what their ideas were for movement because it's really important that we have access throughout Gray County and especially South Gray. We met with the ministry. They were very clear there are no new beds. Past council, current council, citizens, everybody asks. They'll say it's an aging population. We need more beds. That is not on the ministry's agenda at this time, and there are no new beds. We also know that if we give up our beds, they do go back to the ministry, and then it's up to the ministry to decide where the beds go. So finally, we completed the market analysis, and we looked at that to say what consolidation efforts might there be, what vacancies or gaps are there in our area, and how can we move ahead and address those needs. This slide, I apologize for it. It's very hard to read, but it's a good one in the sense that it shows where we sit in the Southwest Lynn. We have 97 beds for people, every thousand, 97 beds for 1,000 people 75 years of age and older. If you look a little bit south of us in the Mississauga Halton, Toronto Central and Central Lynns, they have 63 beds per thousand people. So we are considered a have region as far as system planning goes. So that's further evidence that we need to maintain the beds that we have within Gray County to meet our upcoming needs. This slide was provided by the Lynn last summer and it illustrates the bed um, ratio for Gray County based on the known intentions at that time of all operators in Gray County. It again is a confusing slide, you have to really dig into them to figure it out, but what it does show on a big scale is that there is good evidence of supply throughout Gray County for long-term care beds. And that's the green color you see there, where it's a little bit orange, that's a higher than the target numbers. So there's good supply. CBRE, Valuation and Advisory Services, was hired. They reviewed the current supply of seniors housing they did a market feasibility study and analyzed options. They identified two primary market areas, South Gray, which includes West Gray, Southgate, Gray Highlands, and Chatsworth. North Gray was considered Owen Sound, Georgian Bluffs, Northern Bruce, and South Bruce Peninsula. The options that CBRE explored included seniors' apartments. And they're most successful when they're linked with a continuum of care. And they provide senior housing, but also access to 24-hour emergency care, the option to purchase meal plans and socialization and activities and that type of thing. They also looked at retirement homes, assisted living, and memory care centers. These facilities are um, regulated under the Retirement Homes Act, and the services are custom based based on what the clients and the community are demand for service. This allows the providers to meet the specific community and clientele needs, and it is self-referral. So people living in assisted living or memory care or seniors' apartments can transfer between the various levels of care. Memory care is very similar to assisted living. It just offers a little bit more care, more housekeeping, more um, activities for dementias and Alzheimer's. Long-term care, that's what we provide. And that is completed through a CCAC or Community Care Access Referral. It's for people with high or very high physical and cognitive challenges. It's not self-referral. 24-hour nursing care, specialized services, and specialized equipment. Again, it's specialized care. 
The other is more assisted living for elderly as they age. Services provided in a long-term care home are re regulated by the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care. Admission is through the Community Care Access Center. And as much as sometimes long-term care homes are part of an assisted living community, there is no guarantee that a person can move from assisted living into the long-term care sector attached because it's part of assessment through CCAC and where bed availability is. So those two are part of a continuum, but they are separate from an admission process. So this table shows that there is a need for assisted living, memory care, and senior apartments in our area. It is interesting to note that the projected numbers for assisted living and memory care is very similar for both Own Sound area, North Gray, and South Gray. When you look at those numbers, by 2026, in South Gray, they're suggesting 137 people would benefit from assisted living. Memory care, 32, and seniors' apartments, 204. And 2026 is not that far away. With the projected growth of the senior population in Owen Sound and Georgian Bluffs, Lee Manor is well suited to meet current and future needs within the long-term care community. There are a number of assisted living options in Owen Sound operated by the private sector, and there is room for future development. Greg Abels is identified by the um, CBRE report as an ideal location for a private developer to offer an assisted living and memory care facility. The home has 66 beds, has lots of open space, and its well-positioned suites would provide the opportunity to offer a continuum of care, and land is available to support future development, such as seniors' apartments. The high-profile location is close to the site of the proposed hospital, and many other services are easily accessible. Repurposing this existing building would require minimal change and nobody is currently offering this type of service in Markdale and there is very little supply in South Gray as a whole. Rockwood Terrace is an older building, well settled in a residential neighborhood. The design of the building would require extensive renovations to repurpose it in the same manner and any consideration for future use of this building will be explored in the future. So this is about creating a plan to achieve balance, improve our ability to provide the best care for the most people with the resources we have. Amalgamation will assist us in having the necessary staff resources to support the ongoing provision of high quality, specialized care to meet the needs of residents with increasing complexity. A larger home will also provide the ability to expand knowledge and training for staff to ensure that they have the skill and ability to provide the level of care that's needed. This recommendation provides an opportunity to right-size a long-term care solution to meet the needs and serve the communities in South Gray. Amalgamation also provides an opportunity to decrease the cost to operate long-term care services such as the kitchen, laundry, maintenance shop, and back office functions. And a lot of that is directly through equipment and materials you need to provide those services. And because of the increased need for specialized care, the Ministry um, of Health requirements, rules and regulations, it's really tough in a 66-bed home. That's considered a small home. And it, it becomes very expensive to operate because you have to have the same standards for staffing as far as qualifications, training, and services on board that it becomes very difficult to have that mass number to be able to provide efficient, effective care. The basic model of care to meet standards most efficiently, a minimum would be 128 beds. Oh, sorry, just before I go on there. So this was based on the projected growth in West Gray, the central location of West Gray to serve the populated areas in Hanover, as well as Markdale. It will improve the ability for us to provide better employment opportunities for part and full-time staff and streamline the service we have to provide the best into the future. So converting Gray Gables into assisted living memory care. This recommendation is about identifying a need to support and encourage other development in our community. There's additional jobs and additional services to serve people better. 
By converting Gray Gables building to assisted living, the community retains all the current benefits of visitors coming to Markdale and supporting local businesses, in addition to a broader range of service. There will still be a place for seniors to live in Gray Highlands and Markdale, seniors who will benefit from visitors with family, friends, volunteers, and there's nothing meeting this need at the current time. So it does provide an opportunity for a continuum of care and there would be financial gain for, by selling that building to offset the cost of rebuilding those 66 beds in West Gray. Market research supports the need and also looks favorable on a possible sale. Long-term care is only one service provided by Gray County. It's increasingly complex, highly specialized medical care. There's been significant changes over the years and the challenges are only going to increase as the population ages, the resident acuity continues to increase and our current workforce retires. This final recommendation is for the manage a management partner who will bring additional knowledge, expertise and resources to the county. The management expertise would support Gray County to sustain services, better serve the people and improve our ability to provide long-term care into the future. There would be a higher level of assurance to council and the residents and families on the quality of care that we are providing in our homes. This isn't about the bricks and mortar, and it's about com consistently meeting the standards. The county would retain ownership and accountability of long-term care, and the staff would continue to be municipal employees. So in conclusion, the outpouring of support has been tremendous. It's commendable, and I commend everybody for being here on a Friday night. I'm sure two weeks ago you didn't have this in your date book. We are committed to delivering the best quality care we can with the resources we have. We're looking to the future. We're trying to address and close gaps in services. We have to be able to manage the increasing complexities, manage staff shortages, and we have to look ahead to what services are missing from our communities and how can our senior population be served. Not everybody needs complex care. And we identified an opportunity for development and managing partnerships. We would benefit from sector knowledge and experience to help us sustain our services. your voice, and they're gonna talk a little bit about that, and Pat will as well. We wanna hear from you. If you're, some people will get up and speak tonight, others might be too shy. There are comment cards on the back table. I think some of you have them. Mail them in, email them, phone, whatever works. We have an email um, address set up specifically to receive your comments, qu questions, concerns, a phone number, as well as our website, there's always updates. And the picture on the screen here is what you look for when you go to the Gray County website in order to access the information. As it becomes available, we do post it. Thank you. <laughs>